Kit Guru is with Thermal Grizzly at Computex 2025. It's a very small booth. They have quite a few products to look at. It's also quite busy. So we're going to just dive in and see what we can look at and we'll move around as necessary. Thermal Grizzly has a PC, and I use the words in the loosest possible sense to demonstrate their key products. So the CPU block, which we have an example of here, and you can see it has this black cover. However, the black cover on the built PC has been removed. So you're seeing the bare CPU block. This is their Deltamate Micro Pro 2 for socket AM5, i.e. AMD. That's coming later this year, going to be priced around 300 pounds, euros, don't know about dollars. And I hold it in my hand and Rosie can have a look. As you can see, it is a conventional CPU block. Actually weighs quite a lot. Looks absolutely lovely. Thermal Grizzly will be making a version of this for Intel, much to my surprise. There is still demand for Intel cooling. The component below the block, the pump reservoir, which I thought was by watercool.de, actually was made by Roman himself, Roman of who is De Bauer. So that's an in-house weekend project because he was a bit bored and wanted to work with some glass. If we go around the side to the Deltamate ROG Astral RTX 5090 block, it's a bit of a mouthful, but the name tells you everything. This is a block dedicated to the ASUS Astral uh, graphics card. So you buy your brand new two and a half thousand pounds or euros graphics card, you rip off the stock cooler, you replace it with a very expensive, I think five, one second, 500 for the graphics block? Yeah, 500 euros dollars for the graphics block, but we've done a separate little video with Joe Roby, which Alan may insert here or maybe done separately, which shows you what goes into making this block. It's an absolutely stunning piece of work. The power supply is a power supply that's nothing to do with Thermal Grizzly. The radiator and fan similarly, but apparently they're working on radiator and fan models. Who knew? Also here, we have the Wireview Pro. Let's move along and take a look at that, shall we? We have the original Wireview Pro there, so it's an interface on your 12 volt high power connector to tell you what the heck is going on with your graphics card power feed. Next to that, we have the Wireview Pro 2. So that goes to the graphics card, your power supply goes there, but you will see there are other connectors. They are for data logging. You've got thermal inputs, you've also got a USB-C. Furthermore, you've got the display, obviously, which tells you what's going on when the unit's in action. Shame it's not up and running. Uh, it also has internal memory, so it can data log for a period of many months. And you'll note a tiddly fan. We saw this unit on Elmore's custom build at the G-Skill booth, and the idea is that the fan feeds cooling air to the plug connector and also to the cable. We noticed his was running around 45 degrees C. Without the active cooling, it will get distinctly warmer. It's a bit of a shame this kind of thing is necessary, but it's good that someone's supplying these items. We go to the left. And we have a D-lidded processor. This is a Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Thermal Grizzly supplies D-lidded processors. Two models, Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and this Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. They'll charge you a premium of 120 euros for the Ryzen 7 and a premium of 200 euros for the Ryzen 9. You get the IHS that's been removed with your purchase, but they also send you full inspection photos before and after the delidding process. You can be guaranteed that the process is in good order. Also, if you break it, they'll know you broke it. Of course, when we go to the left, this means that you don't need to buy a delid diamate heater. And furthermore, go to the left again, you don't need to buy the delid diamate. So actually, buying a delidded processor from Thermal Grizzly saves you money. We come to this Rubik's Cube. It's not really a Rubik's Cube, it's fittings. Lots of fittings all plugged together by Joe himself. He said 27 of them. They look like plastic, they're actually metal. I assume there's brass in there. I can see brass or copper. Very weighty. They look absolutely gorgeous. They seem very clever. Until James has got his hands on a batch of them, I'm not gonna offer a view. But there is a card of a load of options. These look highly promising, and I'm certain that James will want to have a play.
and we move across a whole load of thermal compounds, all sold at retail but also sold to OEMs. On the left, Cryonaut Extreme is for people doing liquid helium cooling. Next to that we have Cryonaut which is for liquid nitrogen. We move across, Duranaut is old school for air cooling and water cooling. Hydronaut, similarly, slightly more sophisticated. We go to the right, we get to the interesting stuff in my view, phase sheet. You slap on a piece of this material, it sorts itself out. You haven't got to apply it as such, you just stick it on. Cryo sheet to the right is funny stuff. This is essentially a sheet of liquid metal. You can see there's a kind of oval patch in the center. That's a drop of liquid silicon that's been used just to apply the sheet to the block. And to the right, we have old school conductor which is liquid metal. The thing about cryo sheet is it acts like liquid metal. We know about the basic advance and pro, so you have to choose the thickness of minus pad and how hard you want it to work, but high compression is different. Up to five mil in thickness, but it can squidge down to one mil. We have a spec just down the bottom, rather a sizing sheet. So you can slap on a good chunky piece of high compression and it'll squidge down. In other words, you can be really lazy when you apply it. And I like the idea of that. However, if you're really super lazy, putty. We see here splodges of putty and the color tells you what they are. Pink for basic, pale blue for advanced, gray for pro. And here we have tiddly pots of putty. Putty does everything. The only problem with putty is it causes mess. It works incredibly well. You slap it on, you've got a lot of mess to clean off. Particularly, you can imagine some of this noshing between these components here in the gaps. An absolute swine. At the end, we have some accessories. Would you believe there are two different spatulas for thermal compounds? This TG spatula demonstrates one, just to show I can hold a thing is just for conventional spreading out your thermal compound. And yes, you can indeed use a credit card, no problem. The Pro is for, what would be the word, stiffer thermal compounds, when you really need to lever down on it. Basically, you'll break that, you won't break that. If you do break this, you've probably broken your graphics card or your processor anyway. And finally, Dare Bench Table which turns out to be a project that Roman decided to work on for the fun of it, and it's become an actual product that's going to sell, I don't think it's yet available, for 200 pounds euros. So it's an interface card. It sits under your motherboard. Obviously, the motherboard sits on these standoffs. The idea is you can connect sensors, fans, and storage. Along the edge here, we have four SD slots. Here, we have two SATA SSD interfaces, and you can see a load of USB and such like so you can control all your cooling, your data logging and such like from this board and you can just switch in and switch out motherboards with ease. I like that a very great deal. In fact, I'm going to sign off stood behind that. Kit Guru signing off at Computex 2025 with Thermal Grizzly. We're on TikTok and do please check us out at kitguru.net.